What about driving? Do you enjoy driving? I think I drive with more pleasure since the first one. But... You know, it's so frustrating because, you know, I bought myself a Prius thinking that, you know, that I'm being helpful to the environment. And then two years after I get my Prius, I find out that the battery, once it releases all this toxins into the environment. And here I went, you know, year four, sacrificing my love of driving in the name of supposedly being clean and then I come to find out I'm not even being clean because when I get rid of the car it's gonna accumulate the same amount of toxins that I would have accumulated with a nice car that goes really really fast like one of these ones we have but I here. probably saved my license though because I you know I'm kind of scary you know se me olvida la, 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 la ley cuando because I know what I'm doing, you know. When I got my license, I, I was in car racing school a week right after, uh, you know, getting my license for the first time, and it was for Fast and Furious. So, you know, for me, it's kind of natural to speed, and I know how to do it safely. So it's hard for me to follow the speed limit when I see people going slow for no reason. I'm like, rah, rah. It gets boring, no? Like, yeah, me... so I'm kind of thankful I drive a Prius just so that I don't get in trouble. What about Sports a Sports cars attract attention. <laughs> yeah. Those cops just love stopping you if you got a nice, nice car. Mm -hmm. well, there, there's something very sensual about cars, don't you think? Oh, my God. You know what I did while I was in London? I went to the racetrack. And I, because I was itching, and they don't let you drive anything because of insurance. So I was like, nice. <laughs> I was like, let me go to the racetrack and let me go drive some nice cars. That Lamborghini Viventi. Dios mío, pero ese fucking carro, brother. <laughs> So beautiful. That thing is like, it's like being in the cockpit of a, of a, of a jet fighter. And it's, it's just growling. And, and, and you go in and, you, and, you know, I took it to like maybe 1, 140, you know, on the straightaway. And when you let go of that gas pedal, it sinks. And it hugs the road. And it's just like the, the most beautiful creature. It's like the Batmobile. I love that thing. That's a dream to me. It cost me like 500 American dollars just to drive it around the track like three times. So annoying. But that's my life now. Responsible Michelle. That's cool. Eh. You, you're over 24 now. It's like, it's, like, it's like being really hungry and then tasting a buffet and then not being able to eat <laughs> out of the buffet. You just get a taste. <laughs> so sad. So um, one of the things I think maybe I'm wrong that... Uh, 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 Fast and Furious is very successful because it's not the typical boring middle class story of like predictable people. These are more edgy and uh, w with more strength and they come from the other side of the track. The bourgeois. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you agree with that? And if you can comment on that aspect of the success of it. I, I, you know, it's interesting because, you know, no matter where, I, you know what, I'm just picturing in my mind, I'm picturing, you know, gangsters from Russia, and I'm picturing, you know, Armenian gangsters, and I'm picturing all these people who live on the other side of the tracks that I've met throughout my life, whether I'm in a bourgeoisie scene in Cannes Film Festival or I'm in Saint Tropez partying, you meet all sorts of people in life, and, and, you know, when you reach a certain level of money, it, you know, you meet different types of, you meet the meet people who make it legally, you meet the people who make it illegally, you meet the people who break the system and work within the system to make it illegally, <laughs> and then you've got, and then you've got your gangsters. And it's intriguing because, you know, these characters don't fall into any of that, any of those categories. It's almost like a subcategory of their own uh, because they kind of do their heist, um, but the people that they're, that they're, that they're swindling are, criminals. <laughs> so it's like, it's kind of justified in a vigilante-esque fashion. Um, their, their lifestyle is justified. Uh, but I find it intriguing. I've never seen anything like it in, in, in film before, and, and I'd like to see more of it, because I think it's, it's cool. So I think that's why we all are attracted to not only the cars, the speed, the effects, but also the social structure and the, oh, and the yeah. relationship. It's definitely, there's a, there's a click component. And when I say click, I mean group, entourage, culture, subculture component that's attractive. It's sexy, it's alluring, it's interesting, it's, it's, it's rebellious. Um, and, and I'm attracted to all of those things when, when, I, when I think of the franchise, you know. And, you know, I, j I just hope it maintains that integrity. 
you know, because it's so easy to get lost in, in, in the idea of explosions and, and, and awing people with crazy stunts and stuff that you could sometimes lose track of the integrity of a subculture and, in a story. And I, and I just hope that that is maintained no matter how many hands it's passed through or how many actors get involved with the franchise in the future once we say goodbye. Uh, you know, I hope that that integrity lives on. In, a, in an industry that, uh, I mean, you're an actor, so with being an actress, it's not only working on, on doing movies, but also you have to do social appearances, you have to look a certain way, you have to do the photo call, you know. The clown call, the I, clown call, call. I call it the clown call. So how do you combine all that with your daily life in Venice being cool by the beach and I'm is it a schizophrenic or? I'm almost down to earth broad. It's like whatever, you know, you do what you do for work and then you go back home to your life. And anybody who meets me, whether it's in the street as a fan or, you know, as a friend, you know, at a dinner, at the end of the day, you could see right away. I'm not that girl. I'm not the one with the entourage of people, and I'm not the one who, you know, who's who's unattainable, you know. And when you, it's it's just like, oh, okay, you're one of us, kind of thing.